Hello everybody. Uh, I actually was not planning to make a video this morning because um, by the time you watch this, uh, my last post for the France shirt history, the Nike years, we can say it now, uh, is up and running. So yeah, for that reason I thought I might not make a video, but uh, recent events kind of forced me uh, not forced me but want me to make another video and now I'm anyway in traffic jam to work so might as well use the time for something reasonable um, the reason why I want to do it is because yesterday a uh, legend of my team Lusk and also a quite successful uh, player for um, Austria died at the age of 72 um, Helmut Kögelberger. So, I assume most of you never have heard of him. He is the player of the century for Lusk. Um, he, and I think it's worth saying a few things about him because I really um, think his story deserves a wider audience. Um, I'm wearing my black Lusk shirt in, yeah, a little bit in mourning for that uh, because I also had the fortune to at least get to know him a little bit uh, personally I come to that uh, he was born right after the war as the close to Linz as the son of an Austrian mother and a father from the US soldiers that were uh, kind of occupying Austria at the time and he never knew his father so this is kind of the story they were actually at this time you know it was right after the war austria was split into uh four zones by the winning by the allies i have to say so there was one uh soviet zone which is actually where i live now the american zone was right below and then there was a french zone and of course a british zone um and yeah, he never knew his father, and of course, uh, he was half black, so he was a mulatto, um, which at the time was to get, uh, was uh, associated with some shame, to be honest, uh, for the mother. Uh, it was still not a very open society, uh, and coming also after the na uh, Nazis, you know, uh, this was considered. Uh, they were unfortunately considered lesser people. Um, so um, he's, he himself said that he, he realized that people were talking about him being different, but and uh, you know behind his back. But he never felt that he was not integrated. Um, that this only happened a little bit later on when he started playing soccer. That uh, they were calling him uh, more or less nigger or something like that. Um, but I think there, are, there has been a, a quite a recent uh, historically uh, working on this period and on these people because uh, they, it, it's just probably the most, um, how to say, he is the poster child of this demographic. Most of them did not have that luck that he had, uh, but soccer actually saved him in that sense. He quickly showed a lot of talent in playing soccer and this was still the time when, you know, in Austria uh, Austria was a poor country, right? right? They were all bought down uh, and so the kids actually had to play soccer <laughs> or not had to, but uh, played a lot of soccer in their free time and that's where you develop uh, a lot of skills uh, you know, a lot of raw talent is unearthed there the more you play, the better it is and uh, he said that um, Yes, he went to school, but he was only interested in playing, 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 playing. Like you hear so many stories, especially nowadays from South America. That's his story, and this was Central Europe back then. Uh, he, I think at 16, I want to say, he uh, got to Lusk, and I think, if not in his first year, in his second year, Lusk did the unthinkable and became the first champions of Austria that were not from Vienna. Uh, just a historical side note, um, this was so unusual because until the war started, the 
Austrian Championship was only comprised of teams from Vienna. We're talking about 65. So uh, there was a huge advantage uh, for v v Viennese teams who all had all the talents and more than half of the league was, league was from Vienna as far as I remember. At least four. I might be wrong. I, th I, th I think by that time it had had mixed up. I actually, I might have to check my facts. But I would say there were at least five teams from Vienna in the league. Uh, a few from other um, provinces, and of course, Lask was the one team from Upper Austria. And the interesting part is that at uh, the winter break, Lask was only in seventh spot and seemingly off the pace. Uh, they had a legendary winter camp high up in the mountains where a new coach from the Czech Republic uh, actually got them really really fit and they rolled this and on the last day of the season thanks to Rapid losing um, the last game Lask winning in Vienna at FC Vienna the oldest team in Austria Vienna Football Club, I think. <laughs> it's called the Vienna in, uh, in Austria. They won there the last game and it was the only time that they were first on the table. And they became champions and um, you know I saw an obituary about his video obituary and he said that on the way back to Linz uh, the mass is gathered and even in Vienna uh, people celebrated with them celebrate a lot because this was something special. Uh, this was the high time for Lusk. And, uh, I mean they had another period in the 80s and maybe nowadays but uh, are good days but every time was more like mid-table if not even second division. Uh, of course his talent was too big for the town of Linz and he moved for seven years to Austria Vienna where he became twice uh, champion of Austria twice, he won the cup, he won the put of the highest goal scorer of the league and in 75 he switched back to Lusk, uh, became immediately the captain and inspiration leader and again won the uh, put for the highest goal scorer and you know he is considered an absolute Lask legend. Not only was he part of the team that became champions, he actually kept Lask afloat for a lot for his playing days. Only after he left, I think Lask was relegated uh, down. So, but I also, I'm, I might get my facts wrong. I know that the late 70s and so on was one of the greatest of times for Lask. Uh, for some reason, I don't have my Lask history straight this morning. Anyway, he retired as, as a legend but um, he did not really get into coaching. He, he did some coaching but he actually uh, got his own uh, business after his job as a soccer player. Truly his value as a legend around Linz helped a lot. I think his business was you know a liquid dispenser systems for bars so beer dispensers and so on uh, that he worked on. And he actually, and that's the most interesting part, he, uh, I think he bought a house on the farm close to where my parents moved to in the early 90s. And in this farmhouse he made a um, crib for little children that he did together with his wife. And that was actually something uh, that showed also his other side that he know he didn't have a that easy of a childhood and he wanted to give back and through this uh, unfortunately it was only in the last two, uh, last year of that this institution existed my daughter was lucky enough for two months to visit this coverage job. it was a wonderful place and that's where I actually got to know him I talked to him a few times we barely ever spoke about soccer I mean he knew that I was a Musk fan but he told me about um, how he likes the children and how naturally they try to do it and it really was a nice place. Actually that was the one thing when I had to move to Vienna because I got a job there. I actually regretted that uh, he couldn't go there. We found another really nice place for Sofia. But I really liked that place. I really loved it. I 
loved uh, how he actually took care of the kids there too. In addition, he started an academy uh, in Kenya to, you know, give players, the uh, young kids, the uh, good soccer education and help them there. This was his life work in a way, and um, yeah, he put a lot of energy there. Even uh, last week, he, even though he was sick, he said, "I have to visit my kids in Kenya." So that also says a lot about him. He was really, really engaged. He wanted to give back, and that's uh, another thing. What the world made him legendary, of course. At every occasion when it was Lusk was good or bad, everyone wanted to talk to him about Lusk. And that's of course the part, I mean, he was uh, 10 years ago when Lusk celebrated 100 years. Um, he was given the award of Lusk play of the century. And uh, rightfully so. Uh, he might have been the greatest player that Lusk ever had that was playing for Lusk. Somewhat jokingly, Matteo Kovacic, who is now who played for Inter Real Madrid and also now is now at Chelsea, he was born in Linz and he played his youth soccer for Lask, but then he, his parents went back to Croatia. So, you know, Lask is still, whenever he transfers, gets a little uh, sum for you know compensation, but yeah. Uh, in a way, I cannot count him as a Lask player, although whenever I see it, that's what I think. He was born in Linz. He played for my team, but I guess his attachment to that team is not that that big, I guess. And yeah, he also made a good career, but um, you know, it's hard to compare periods. If you look at the clubs that Kovacic played, Kovacic is the best player that ever had a last jersey on, even though he never played for the senior team. Um, but then again, Cody Berger never had the chance to move to such a big team, and his big team was Austria Wien and they were a big team at the time. Uh, also has to be said, not Real Madrid status, and I think in the 60s and then 70s, uh, there was a clear decline in Austrian soccer. Um, from being right at the front runners uh, to, uh, you know, going a little bit towards mid-table. Uh, in many ways, Austrian soccer is a, is a story of early highs and then a long decline. I am actually hopeful that things are going a little bit on the up now, but if you look at the club soccer scene here uh, in Austria, it's Salzburg and the rest is mm, shaky. If we didn't have Salzburg, I don't think we would have the good UEFA ranking. Although Salzburg, despite all the bad that, uh, that is accompanying, I think the their existence helps raise the level as well, a little bit. Well, yeah, but it was not Salzburg that I'm talking about, it was Kugelberger that I wanted to talk about. Um, as I said, what I like about his is that, yes, he acknowledges not the not easy childhood, that he became a star through soccer, um, that he actually always remained grounded. Uh, I could even tell it when talk talk to him, this was... Um, he was a, a simple guy, but he was fine with it, and that's and that's always something good to have. Uh, always remain with your roots, and uh, him giving back and having his little projects. They're not the high-profile projects, and I, I think he, he wasn't even looking for that. He, he, he wasn't looking for all the fame that you know uh, other people uh, say. It was not super well publicized, uh, even within Austria. Uh, only now in these obituaries it comes up. I know that here in Upper Austria um, you hear a little bit more about him, but I think in Vienna no one knew about this. Uh, the only thing that angered me, not angered, but you know, made me sad is that when it was reported on one of the main Austrian news pages um, of the state television, they mentioned basically that he was a, a famous Aust uh, a legend of Austria Wien. Yes, he played probably his best career there. He became a national team player there. Um, so this part should not be underestimated. But he doesn't have the status for Austria Wien than uh, he has for Lusk. That also has to be stated to me. And that he actually 
came up the ranks through the local area but I guess this also shows a little bit the um, you know the status between Vienna and Linz. I was unhappy that on the same page when they had the video with Jerry it was all about his time in Upper Austria and only mentioned in passing that he also played for Austria that he was successful there, he was a striker, he was the, he was a good player for Austria and yeah, I mean he told me once that uh, him, when I told him that I have to go, go to Vienna he said yeah, he said when he had to go to Vienna this was a little bit scary but you know he made his way in Vienna so yeah, uh, he, he needed to find his way but when he found it uh, he enjoyed being there and I can say something similar for myself. Uh, so therefore, rest in peace Helmut Kögelberger. Uh, you will be missed and I hope that part of this video makes you a bit more well known to outside of the outside world, outside of Upper Austria or even Austria. And with that, uh, like this video if you want to know more about Lask and so on I have stories to tell um, let me know in the comments uh, Lask is not the glamour team I understand that but I think if a book was written about Lask it could be a bestseller with the stories uh, of going from highs to having very eccentric presidents with even uh, international crime investigation involved um, I think it could make for quite a book, if anyone, whatever, I would love to tell those stories, but I know that uh, most people are more interested in what's happening now, but yeah, if you want to know more about this and want me to make videos, um, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, um, and I put in the description a link to the academy that Kogelberger made in Kenya. Can donate if you want there and yeah give me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos of me talking while driving jersey reviews giving you my thoughts on bigger games and yeah i guess i will talk to you soon bye